Hello, everyone. My name is Andy Hopper, and I'm a solutions architect with Amazon Web Services. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can use the AWS SDK for .NET in your Xamarin projects to create mobile applications that use AWS services. In this video, I'll be using Visual Studio on a Mac. If you're developing on Windows, I've recorded another video that demonstrates the developer experience using Visual Studio for Windows. So let's get started. I'm now going to create a new application. And since for my app, I'd like to go ahead and use a cross-platform user interface, I'll be using Xamarin Forms. However, if you'd prefer to use the native UI for your platform, the steps that you're going to follow will be exactly the same. So I'll go ahead and name my project Demo App, and you'll see you're presented with an option for how you'd like to store your shared code. The default, and my personal preference, is to use the .NET standard library. What this will do is create a project that compiles to a library that's then loaded by your platform-specific code. Next, you're presented with a set of options describing where your code's going to reside and whether or not you'd like to use Git for your version control. In this case, I'll just go ahead and leave it as the defaults. After a couple of seconds, you'll see a solution, and now it's time for us to add support for the AWS SDK. To do this, we'll use the standard NuGet approach. We'll right-click on the project and choose Add NuGet Packages. And in the dialog that appears, we'll type AWS SDK. Now, in the search results, you'll see a large number of packages. This is because the .NET SDK team did a great job of breaking each service's SDK into its own package. By separating them in this manner, we've made it easier to add support for new services and features, and it also means that you can minimize the size of your app by only including the library code that you actually need. Now, in, for the demo app that I'm building in this video, I'm going to read a few items from a DynamoDB table, so I'm going to check off AWS SDK .DynamoDB v2. However, I'm not going to be able to call the DynamoDB APIs, or any services APIs for that matter, without credentials, so I'm going to add a reference to the AWS SDK Cognito Identity Library. Finally, since I'm using Xamarin Forms, I'm able to use what's called a view model to use data binding and separate my code from my UI. I'm going to use a popular library for this that's called MVVM Lite. Okay, now that we have all of our packages selected, we'll click Add Package. And after a couple of seconds, it'll download the package and get us back into our project. So now it's time to fetch some data from DynamoDB. So I'm going to go ahead and add my view model. So I'm going to add new file and I'm going to call it main page view model because it's going to be a view model for the main page. And I'm going to derive it from that Golisoft library's uh, view model base class. This just has some helpful plumbing code that makes data binding easier. Now, in order for my view to see data, I've got to publish it. So let's go ahead and I'm going to add a public I enumerable of object. Now, this is a demo app, so I'm taking some architectural shortcuts. In practice, you'd actually have a strongly typed class instead of making it a, a collection of objects. I'm going to go ahead and name my property data. The name doesn't really matter all that much. I'm just going to get a private setter and a public getter. And let's go ahead and fix our namespaces here. And now let's go ahead and add a, a function that will pull our data from DynamoDB. I'm going to make it a private async task, and I'm going to call it fetch data. And let's go ahead and fix our namespaces real quick while I'm here. Great. Now, I mentioned earlier that I'm not able to call DynamoDB without invoking or without supplying credentials to DynamoDB. So what I'm going to do is use Cognito to give myself a set of uh, an access key and a secret that I can use to call the service. And to do that, I'm going to use a new Amazon.Cognito Identity Cognito AWS credentials. And you'll see that this takes an identity pool ID and a region. Now, what I've done before I created this project was I've defined an identity pool in the console, uh, and that actually uh, has two roles. It's got an unauthenticated role for anonymous users and then an authenticated role 
role for people who've actually verified their credentials. Uh, I'm going to keep it simple and not have a login process for my demo app. So what I did was I took the unauthenticated role, which is an identity and access management role, and I gave it sufficient permissions to read from my DynamoDB table, which I also created ahead of time. So let's go ahead and this thing needs an identity pool ID. I would prefer not to expose my identity pool ID through a video. So I actually defined a helper class earlier that's got my identity pool ID in it. So I'm going to go ahead and add that file to my project. Yes, I'll copy this file and I'll add it here, AWS environments.identity pool ID. And then for the region, I'll do Amazon region endpoint, and I'm going to do US East 1 because that's where I define my Cognito identity pool. Great. Okay, so now it's time to actually talk to DynamoDB. I'm going to go ahead and create a DynamoDB client, and this is going to be a type new Amazon.DynamoDB v2, and it's going to be a DynamoDB client. And this is actually going to take a set of credentials and regions. So I'm going to give it the credentials I defined above here, and I'm going to give it the Amazon region endpoint US East, because that's where I did it. And next, it's time for us to actually start fetching data. Now, at this point, I want to point out a pattern you're going to see uh, throughout the AWS SDK for .NET. Uh, first and foremost, when you're calling an API, it's going to take a request object and it's going to return a response object that matches pretty closely to the REST style APIs that we expose for these services. The other thing is that they're all asynchronous. Now, the good news here is that we natively support async await uh, that's you know supported as a first party citizen in C Sharp. So this makes your code significantly easier to write. So let's see what that looks like in practice. All right, so let's go ahead and get some data. I'm going to define a result, which is going to be an await against the DDB client's scan async method. And what I'm going to be doing here is I'm actually downloading the entire contents of the table because I want to display it on my screen. Now, the scan async method takes a new scan request object. So I'm going to make things a little easier here and fix up my namespaces. Great. Now, the scan request takes two properties. It takes a table name. And my table name is demo app data. And then the what it then needs is a list of attributes to get. So let's take a quick look at our uh, DynamoDB table. So you'll see here's the DynamoDB table. Uh, it's got an ID, it's got a description, and it's got a name field. And you'll notice that all three of these attributes are strings. That'll be important in just a couple of seconds here. So let's switch back to our app. So the attributes to get will be a new list of string. And I'm going to populate that list. I'm going to give it ID. I'll give it name, and I'll give it description. All right, just checking my spelling here real quick. Okay, good. That all looks good. Great. Assuming our call succeeds, we'll see the items in the property of the results object named items. So let's populate our data property with res these results by issuing a link select. So we'll do results.items. And what I want to do is project the format of the data that's coming from DynamoDB, which is in a pretty DynamoDB specific format, into something that's a little more idiomatic in the world of .NET, a class with a set of properties on it. So I'll do a select, and this is going to be a link select. So let's go ahead and get uh, the namespace for link in place. And let's go ahead and say it's going to be for each item in the items property. And I'm going to return a, a new object. And that object is going to expose an ID property. And that's going to be of I ID. And I want the string value. So I wanted to point out earlier that we're using the, uh, the string value of this. And .s in DynamoDB clients parlance is how you get the string value of an attribute. Next is I'll get the name. And the name will be I of name. And I want the string value of that. And then finally, I want the description for each of these description. And that's going to be I of description. And I want the string value of that. And then finally, just for uh, convenience, I'm going to go ahead and order this thing by the name property. So I'll do I, I dot name. 
Okay, great. So at this point, now I've actually published my data. It's on our data property. And in order to make sure our view is actually made aware of the fact that the data property has been set up, what we're going to do is we're actually going to inform it uh, using another feature of that uh, MVVM live library called raise property changed. And I'm going to give it the name of our data property. Uh, and then last little housekeeping thing, in order to fetch this data, I've actually got to invoke the method that fetches the data. So I'm going to call fetch data right here, uh, and then we'll be done with our view model class. So let's switch over to our main page. All right, so here we are in our main page, and you'll see there's some boilerplate code that was added by the project template. Let's go ahead and replace this with a list view that's going to enumerate the list of items that we downloaded from that DynamoDB table. And to do this, I'm going to set the item source to the data property that we defined on our view model. So I'll do a data binding statement here. I'll say it's going to be binding to the data property. Now, in order to format the data that this list view is going to be showing, I'm going to define something called an item template. So this will be a list view, item template, oops, not item source, but item template. And internally that has a data template, which contains a view cell. And then what I'm gonna have inside that view cell is I'm gonna stack the name and description properties one on top of the other. So I'll put in a stack layout here. And inside that stack layout, I'll put a label, not another list view, but a label. And that label's text will be defined by a binding against the name property. And I'm gonna just highlight the fact that it's there and I'm gonna do a font attributes of bold just to highlight it that that's the name property. Next is I'll add a label and this label will contain the description field. So we'll have it bind against description. And I won't do any decoration on this one. So we'll go ahead and close that one out. Finally, let's go ahead and make our XML pretty. And we'll do a data template. And then last is the list view item template. And at that point, we are done. So now we have a way for us to display the data inside our user interface. The last thing that we need to do now is to make our view aware of the view model. So to do that, we'll go into app.xaml and we'll go to our startup code. And in the original template, all it does is create a main page and display it. Let's go ahead and make our uh, main page aware of our view model by setting the binding context. And what we'll do is we'll make it a new main page view model. And what that will do is actually boot up our view model, hand it off to the main page, and then the main page will engage in data binding against that data property when it sees that it's got some data to display. At this point, we're ready to actually try our application. So I'm going to go ahead and click the run button and it's going to take a few seconds to compile. So I'm going to engage in a little bit of video magic and see you on the other side. All right, so the emulator has just booted up and in just a moment, we should see the data actually rendered from our DynamoDB table. And look at that. So now we see the items that were actually contained inside that DynamoDB table displayed as a set of list items inside our main form of our application. Obviously, you'll want to do some more interesting things such as provide editing user interfaces, that sort of thing. But the idea here is to just illustrate how easy it was to get everything booted up. So just to recap, AWS has great support for .NET, .NET Core, and Xamarin developers. We've published our SDK using the very popular NuGet package management system. And as you just saw, we've made it easy to access the data in your environment in just a few lines of code. I hope this video was useful to you, and I can't wait to see what you build on AWS. Happy coding.